Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Yashala. Shabbat Shalom, Dawala Banya Shala. Another episode, part two, bringing out the precepts. It's part two of a previous lesson. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yah, Bashem Yahweh Bashem Kadash, the true Father's name in ancient Paleo Hebrew. And Yahweh Shai HaMasiyah, the true name of the Messiah, the Deliverer of this world, and he calls Jesus the Christ. And before I get back into that lesson, I want to bring out these precepts of the Most High's judging his wicked land, Babylon the Great, the United Snakes of America. I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 66, and I'm going to start with the 15th verse. Isaiah 66 and 15. Isaiah 66 and 15 read, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with a, his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Read it again. Isaiah 66 and verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh, again, you see what's going, uh, the prophecy coming to pass. The West Coast is burning down. The, the Midwest right now, they're preparing for this, this two hurricane um, uh, storms that's supposed to make landfall. Uh, the water spots that he put right in front of this hur the same area, Louisiana, Texas, and all this, he put the, you know, he's showing his might. So I just wanted to bring out these precepts to show them the, the, the Heavenly Father's might and power. Read it again, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger and fury with his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh, Isaiah 66 and 16. 66 and 16 reads, For by fire and by his sword, Will Yahweh plead with f all flesh? Isaiah 66 and 16. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. I'm going to give all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father, casting his judgment against his wicked land and society, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. the United Snakes of America. Let me get another precept. Let's go to the book of Malachi. Malachi 4 and starting with verse 1. Malachi 4 and 1 reads, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Malachi 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay, and read it again. Malachi 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, all you proud people, all you people uh, turning away from the Most High, you, you, the two-third club that, that, that's living in this captivity, the way of the heathens, following the heathen customs, uh, instead of following the law, statute, commandments, again, you're going to burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, say, if you're how of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Just want to bring out those two precepts before I continue to sit down. What good things shall I do that I may uh, have eternal life? Uh, how to break it up into two parts. There were so many precepts to bring it out. Again, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, coming in the name of His Holy Son, Yahweh Shah Masiach. Uh, Baha Shem coming in uh, through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodash. And let's get into it. Okay, let's get back into the lesson. How, what good thing shall I do that I may 
have eternal life. I'm going to go back into the book of St. John. St. John 12, and starting with the 25th verse. St. John 12 and 25 reads, Red letters, the Yahweh Shah Hamasiyah, the deliverance save of Israel speaking. St. John 12 and 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. I'm going to read it again. St. John 12 and verse 25. The Messiah speaking. In red letters, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world, Babylon the Great, shall keep it unto life eternal. St. John 12 and 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Okay, St. John 12 and 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. The way that Christ was persecuted, afflicted, killed for the, for the, for the word of the, of the Most High. Um, you know, the servants and the prophets and the apostles of the past were afflicted and beheaded. So we're going to be persecuted. That's why Babylon is going into the stage right now with this vaccine that's coming. And, and um, I already seen a, a news clip that they mandated, I guess, in Massachusetts that all children have to be vaccinated before they go to school. As soon as they get this corona vaccine, that's what they're going to come out with. Uh, um, that you must be vaccinated to go to work, that you must be vaccinated to go to school because they don't want you to uh, um, pass on the corona. And it just, it's just going to be an affliction to us, the true Israelites, that know that we're not getting any of these wicked uh, customs out here, any of these vaccines. Again, St. John 12 and 26, If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Okay, let's get a precept thing uh, back in the book of Matthews. Book of Matthew, 16th chapter, starting with the 24th verse. Matthew 16 and 24 reads, And then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 6 and 24. Read, then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16 and 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Again, Matthew 16, 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That is eternal life. That you pick up the cross, follow the Messiah, um, lose this life in this wicked world, Babylon the Great, and you will find it with eternal life. Matthew uh, 16 and 26 and it reads, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, Matthew 16 and 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels... And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. A million angels are coming with the Messiah. 
and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matthew 16 and verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there'll be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Very powerful. I'm going to read it again. Matthew 16 and 28. Salakim. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, so we ha- that's why the book of Matthew says you have to endure to the end to be saved. There's all this folly of man, is all, all these people saying, yeah, I'm saved, I'm saved. How can you be saved? That's folly of man is, and, and you just unlearn making statements like that because nobody's saved until they endure to the end and see the coming of the Messiah. Ha, who, who, who will deliver you and be your Savior will be Yahweh Shai HaMasiach who this world even calls Jesus the Christ. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So if you, if, if you love your life, this life here, you're going to lose it. But if you forsake this life for the Messiah's uh, sake, You're going to gain it, and you're going to gain eternal life just as he did from the Heavenly Father on the third day he rose after being crucified by these devils out here that crucify him. Let's go to Book of Acts. Book of Acts, uh, 13th chapter. And I'm going to start at the 46th verse. Acts 13 and verse 46. And it reads, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of Yahweh shall first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Uh, Acts 13 and 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold, boldly said, It was necessary that the word of the Most High shall first have been spoken to you, but being ye put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Acts 13 and 47. For so have Yahweh commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Uh, Acts 13 and 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of Yahweh, as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Okay. And I just want to, I'm going to, I'm going to break it down into the Gentiles here. And who were the Gentiles that Paul and Barnabas and the other apostles were going through throughout the lands of Corinth, Galatia, and all the other lands that they went to. I'm going to precept that. But let me continue reading. Acts 13 and 49. And the word of Yahweh was published throughout all regions. So the word of Yahweh came to publish throughout the, all the regions, the four corners of the earth. Okay, so who were the Gentiles that Paul was referring to in his epistles? Very easy. Let's get that. Staying in the book of Acts, chapter 15. Let's start at the 23rd verse. Acts 15 and 23. This this cuts all this um, Gentiles, meaning the other people of the heathen nations. That's folly and madness. Okay, Acts 15. But, and if you get the understanding, you know, more power to you, praise the Most High, because people just, this is a stumbling block for everybody. Acts 15 and 23. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles, the elders, and brethren send greetings unto the brethren. If you have to be a brethren, you got to be a brother. Okay? So they send Letters after this man of the apostles, the brethren, the elders sent greetings unto the brethren, their brothers, which are which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia. Okay, 
um, the apostles, the elders, and brethren, they sent greetings unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles, meaning they're living in a Gentile state of mind, just like the two-third club here in Babylon. Just picture Paul writing a letter to Babylon here. The two-third club, all of you Israelites that are living by the, 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 the philosophy of man, the commandments of men here, the United Snakes of America, keeping their folly days and their wicked uh, folly days and all their ways of here in America, it's the same thing. When you write a letter, it's, it's to and from. Well, Paul and, the, and Barnabas were writing letters again, and the apostles and elders to their brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia. Let's get for, um, further uh, edified. Let's drop down to the 36th verse, Acts 15 and 36. I know a lot of people are not going to get this because they believe that Gentile means all the heathen nations. How could that be? If you see part one, when I gave you Isaiah 40 and 17, that all the other nations are as nothing and vanity. There is no confusion with the Most High, just people unlearning and, and, and not giving the knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Acts 15 and uh, 36. Acts 15 and 36. Reads, and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, "Let us go again and visit our brethren." In every city. Okay, so who did Paul, Barnabas, and all the apostles and prophets of the past? Who was who 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 who, are the, uh, who was Paul writing to? Who's Paul's epistles went to? Were to their brethren in every city that were living in a Gentile state of mind. I can't make it any clearer, but I know a lot of you're not gonna get this. It's a stumbling block. That y'all believe that the, that Paul was writing to the Gentile, meaning every heathen nation. That's a lie, madness, and folly. Acts 15 and 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of Yahweh and see how they do. They were only visiting the, 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 their brethren in a Gentile state of mind in all the cities, Galatia, you name it, uh, Corinth, um, Sicilia, I mean, you name it, all the uh, Antioch, they were only seeking their brethren, okay? This word is only again to the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? That point blank and period. I just wanted to clarify that and bring out that precept that they, they were writing to their brethren in a Gentile state of mind. Let's move on. Go to the book of Romans. Book of Romans, chapter 2, verse, starting with the 6th verse. Romans 2 and 6 reads, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Romans 2 and 7, To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Read it again. Romans 2 and 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Yahweh Shai Masiah. Uh, Romans 2 and 7. To them who are patient, continuant, and well-doing, seek for glory and honor, for immortality, eternal life. Romans 2 and 8. But unto them that are continuous and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Romans 2 and verse 9, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jews first and also of the Gentile. Gentile meaning the, the, the ten tribes. Because we know the learned Israelites know that the Jews are the, are, are, are the southern kingdom. Um, Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. And the northern kingdom are the, are the, are the native and um, so-called Latino nations. 
I know there's a lot of brothers that disagree with that, but you know, the most high ain't dealing with you because it's it's a proven fact. And it's, it's even proven in the in the Apocrypha, the thirteenth chapter. Okay? Um again, to them who by patient continuance and well doing seek glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are con contentious and do not obey the truth. The ones that don't want to live by the law, statute, commandments. The ones that are breaking the Sabbath. So forth and so on. But obey on righteousness. On righteousness of this world. Indignation and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Point blank and period. If you're not living by the law, statute, commandments. That's, that's the... That's the, that's the, you know, your judgment coming. Indignation, wrath, and tribulation. That's why so many people getting judged here in Babylon the Great. The whore of Babylon, a.k.a. the United Snakes of America. Look at the fires. Look at the storms. You know, people getting judged. People being killed in motor vehicle accidents. So forth and so on. Getting How many people getting shot out here? It's judgment of the Most High God, Yahweh. You know? Yahweh. Let, let me get a precept on that. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 32 and the 39th verse. Deuteronomy 32 and 39 reads, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands. Like the um, the Messiah said in, in St. John 17 chapter, nobody could pluck him out of the Father's hands. He, the Father says here, see now that I, even I, there's no God where I kill, I make alive. It's the Most High that does all the killing and keep people alive. He wounds and he heals. Okay? Point blank and period. Let's get another precept just to bring it out. The Bible, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 says, prove all things. Well, I'm going to prove all things. Let's go to, um, where do I want to go? Isaiah, 45th chapter, the 7th verse. This is through the Spirit. Now, it had nothing to do with this lesson, but just through the Spirit to prove my point. That the Most High kills, makes alive, wounds, and heals. Anybody getting judged out here? It's through the Spirit and the judgment of the Most High. You're being visited by those evils, um, I mean, those spirits that I spelt out in, in, in the first lesson, that they're spirits for vengeance and death. There you go. Go back to the first lesson and uh, get edified. Isaiah 45 and 7 reads, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Can't make it any clearer than that. Any clearer than that. Isaiah 45. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So as you see, he kills, makes alive, he wounds, he heals. He, cre he forms the light, creates darkness. I make peace. I make, uh, create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So when anybody's getting judged down here in Babylon the Great, it's through the spirit of Yahweh by Shema Masiach Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Heavenly Father for you not turning to uh, the Word, not come, not not being circumcised in the heart, which is mine, uh, and not following the you know the commandments. It's just and the two thirds, like he said in Amos nine chapter, all the sinners of my people shall be killed by the sword. So. Again, you, there's we, the two-third club, are living in a Gentile state of mind, following the, the customs of this world. It's the same Gentile state of mind that Paul and uh, Barnabas and the other apostles were writing to in all these other lands in the book of Corinth, Galatia, so forth and so on. Um, let's get, let's get, let me get another precept. Let's go to Second Samuel two and six. So lock in. Let me just, like I said, this is just off the cuff. I'm just. First Samuel, First Samuel 2 and 6, the precept upon precept. This is how you read the Bible. 
This is how you get precepts throughout all the books that will back up whatever the precept is. I gave you that he he, uh, he kills, he makes a lie, he wounds, he heals, create light, create darkness, create peace, create evil. Well, this is 1 Samuel 2 and verse 6. And it reads, Yahweh killeth and maketh alive. He bring down to the grave and bringeth up the resurrection. 1 Samuel 2 and 7. Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. 1 Samuel 2 and 8. He rises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them amongst prince and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's and he has set the world upon them. Everything that goes on in this world is through the spirit of Yahweh by Shema Masiach Yahweh Shai. Point blank and period. I gave you three precepts and I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Uh, where was I? Romans 2 and 6. Let's go to Romans 5, 21. The Bible says prove all things. If you're a true prophet, you should be able to prove all things that you're saying with precepts, not with your own words. I let the Bible do my speaking through the Spirit of the Heavenly Father. Romans 5 and 21 reads, That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahweh Shai Hamasiach, our Lord. Read it again. That as sin have reigned unto death, we all know, um, you know, sin, uh, the, you know, like the wages of sin is death. That's the, that, that's the repercussion of sinning, is death. That uh, as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness. That's the grace and uh, through repentance, which is only given to Israel, that we can uh, reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahweh Shai HaMasiach, our Lord. Period. All right, that's Romans 5.21. Let's get a precept. Let's go to Romans 6. Uh, Romans 6, starting from the top, verse 1. Romans 6 and 1 reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So you're just going to keep sinning because you think you're going to have the grace of the, of, of the Messiah? Again, Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Romans 6 and 2. God forbid means hell no. <laughs> you can't continue sinning. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I mean, point blank and period. You just can't continue sinning. You need to come back in these last days to the law, statute, commandments. Uh, repent from all your uh, unrighteousness and wickedness. Clearly says here, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Uh, uh, Romans 6 and 2, God forbid, God forbid means no. How shall we then that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let's get a, let, let me get a precept through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Yeah, uh, through the Spirit. Uh, this is Hebrews 10, 26. Again, Bible says prove all things. That's 1 first, first Thessalonians 5 and verse 21. Prove all things. Anything you say, you have to prove it. Hebrews 10 and 26 reads, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sins. Meaning if you keep sinning, thinking that he, the, the Messiah is going to give you grace, and you do it willfully, there, there remaineth no more sacrifice of sin. So that's why he said, 
God forbid. You can't keep sinning. You need to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Uh, circumcise your heart, which is your mind. Uh, follow the commandments, all the law, statutes, and commandments, the Mosaic laws. Um, that's how you gain eternal life. All right, let me move on. Back to the book of Romans. Romans 6 and 22nd chapter. Uh, Romans 6 and uh, 22nd verse reads, But now being made free of sin, Romans 6 and 22, But now being made free of sin, and you repent it, and you live it, you're following the law, statute, commandments, you're observing the Sabbath, and so on, his holy feast days, and you're uh, forsaking the evilness and wickedness of this world, Romans 6 and 22, But now, being made free of sin and become servants to the Most High, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Romans 6 and 22, but now being made free of sin. This is after repentance, after you come to the knowledge of the truth and you live by the law, statute, commandment, you circumcise your heart meaning your mind to the to, to, to the mosaic laws you do as the as the laws of Moses as as the Messiah commanded ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life again what should I do that I may have eternal life you have to repent from your evil and wickedness ways of this world stop following the commandments of men of this world and follow the law statute commandments of the most high God Yahweh Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin, I cover this, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh Shai, Hamasiach, our Lord. Can't make it any clearer. I mean, this is point blank and period. For the wages of sin is death, and the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai Masiyat. Romans 6, uh, let's get a preset. Let's go to 1 Timothy. Book of 1 Timothy. New Testament, 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12. First Timothy six, Salakia. Let me read up a little. Yeah, First Timothy six. Salakia. Yeah, first Timothy six. I'm gonna start with the seventh verse. Just to clarify everybody about this filthy lucre, which is the greed of money. Biblically, which is what this world is is, 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 you know, even though the Bible says that money is a defense and it's a mechanism that you need to survive in this captivity. But I'm going to start First Timothy 6 and verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out of. First Timothy 6 and 7. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can't carry nothing out. You ain't going out with nothing. You're going six foot deep, and that's it, and that is hell. Hell is a condition. Heaven is a condition. There's no uh, place down there with uh, uh, angels with horns and running around with a pitchfork. That's all folly and madness of this world. Hell is a condition, being in the lowest state of this society, which we're in hell right now, being persecuted, being shot unarmed, you know, uh, last high, first fired. I mean, you name it. We're being persecuted every day out here. First Timothy 6 and 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. First Timothy 6 and 8. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. First Timothy 6 and 9. But they that will be rich 
1 Timothy 6 and 9, but they that will be rich fall into the temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into destruction and perdition. I'm going to read it again so everybody wants to idolize these rappers and musicians and all this madness and folly, these uh, uh, Follywood actors and all that. First Timothy, and this is to all of you, all you so-called rich people out here. First uh, Timothy 6 and 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into destruction and perdition. That's why Follywood in California is burning right now as I speak through the spirit of Yahweh by Shimei Awishai. For all the wickedness that they've uh, put out here. And um, that's just it. But let me stay on topic. First Timothy 6 and 10 reads, For the love of money is the root of all evil. I'm going to repeat it. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And when we know money in the Bible, the Messiah and the Mosiah calls it filthy lucre, meaning the greed of money. Okay, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covered after all the whoredom churches, they pass that basket around when you, they're supposed to be preaching the word of the Most High. Christ didn't carry no bucket. The Messiah and the Savior of Israel didn't carry a plate around and charge everybody, you know, this is madness and folly. And that's the love of money. That's the stumbling block and the snare. Okay, that turn many into foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. These whoredom churches are no better. And all you Israelites out there collecting money, you know, collecting money, the Christ and the apostles of the past, they didn't have no plates, they didn't have no buckets collecting money. He said, freely receive, freely give. Feed my flock. You know, they, there's no payment for admission to hear the word of the Most High. But let me move on. I want to jump off topic, but I tell you, this is through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covered after, they have erred from the faith. Like I just said, they have erred from the faith, taking collections to the people that don't have nothing in this society. We're, we're at the bottom with nothing out here, and yet what 10%. Give it to, to all these hoarding churches out here. That's folly and madness. Folly and madness. Um, the covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. First Timothy 6 and 11. But thou, O man of the Most High, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, Faith, love, patient, meekness. Can't make this up. First Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Repeat it again. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Um, I mean, you can't make this up. Read it again. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Not the material stuff. The, the, the greed of money, which the Bible again calls filthy lucre. You should not have to pay to hear the holy word of the most high God, the creator of all. <laughs> it's folly and madness. Whereunto thou hast also called and hast professed a good a profession before many witnesses. I mean, I don't want to be the dead horse, but I just wanted to bring this out to the spirit of the heavenly father. Let's get a precept. Let's go to the book of Matthews. Because it's through the Spirit. Sometimes I get upset with all this nonsense and madness out here. 
Matthew 19 and verse 21. In red letters again, Yahweh Shah Hamasiyah speaking. Yahweh, and it reads, Yahweh Shah said unto him, If thou be, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Can't make it no better precept than uh, this precept to 1 Timothy 6 chapter. Read it again, Matthew 19 and verse 21. Yahweh Shai said unto him, let me back up. Uh, to 20, Matthew 19 and 20. A young man said unto him, speaking to the Messiah, all these things that I have, I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Matthew 19 and 21. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, if thou wilt be perfect, how do you be perfect? Living by the law, statute, commandments. Getting circumcised, you know, um, following the, the Sabbath, keep it holy. Step away from this wicked world and, and their ways. Again, Yahweh said unto him, If thou be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. All praise and glory to Yahweh Shai. Can't make this up. Perfect precept to 1 Timothy 6 chapter about the root of all evil, which is money. What does the Messiah says? If thou wilt go perfect, go and sell what thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Can't make this up. Let's keep on. Let's go to the book of Titus. Book of Titus in the New Testament. Titus 1 and starting at the top. Titus 1 and 1. Titus 1 verse 1 reads, Paul, a servant of the Most High and an apostle of Yahweh Shah Masiach, according to the faith of the Most High's elect and the acknowledging, acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Read it again, Titus 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of the Most High, an apostle of Yahweh Shahamasiah, according to the faith of the Most High's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Titus 1 and 2. In hopes of eternal life, which the Most High that cannot lie. Read it again. In hopes of eternal life, which the which the Most High that cannot lie promised before the world began. Read it again. Sounds so sweet. Again, less the first lesson I brought it out. Who who are the Israelites? Who's given the promises? The first co the, the covenants, the promises, the service of the Most High, the law. Who was it given to? The true Israelites, the biblical Israelites, the people of the Most High God, the, the children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, native and semen of Indian and Negroid descent. Those are the true people of the Most High God. I'm going to read again from the top. Titus 1 and 1. Paul, a servant of the Most High and an apostle of Yahweh Shah Masiyat according to the faith of the Most High's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Titus 1 and 2, in hope of eternal life, which the Most High that cannot lie promised before the world began. Promise which uh, before the world began. Uh, Titus 1 and 3. But has in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of the Most High, our Savior. Point blank and period. Beautiful precepts in the book of Titus. Dust off your Bible and read, you know, like I said in the first part of the lesson. 
Search the scriptures and read. None of them shall fail. Let's stay in the book of Titus. Let's go to Titus, the third chapter and the seventh verse. So like it. Let me read a little up here. So like it. Yeah. Beautiful precepts here. I'm going to. Um, uh, Titus 3 and starting with the second verse. Titus 3 and verse 2. Again, this is through the Spirit. It wasn't planned, but through the Spirit, beautiful precepts in the book of Titus. Titus 3 and 2 reads, To speak evil of no man, to be no brothers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Men, Titus 3 and 3, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diver lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Titus 3 and 4 reads, but after that the kindness and love of the Most High, our Savior towards men appeared. Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Renew your, your you know, renew your, you know, your spirit. Uh, um, forsake this world and all the madness out here, the love, uh, the lust of the love for money, the filthy lucre. Okay, Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration as the Messiah regenerated and rose after the third day and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. How do you get the renewing of the Holy Spirit? Living by the law, statute, commandments, circumcising your heart, which is your mind, following the Mosaic law, so forth and so on. I mean, this whole lesson, it, it, it covers this whole uh, uh, topic. Uh, Titus 3 and 6, which he shed on abundantly through Yahweh Shai, Christ our Savior. Which he shed on abundantly through Yahweh Shai, Christ our Savior. And this is the point. Titus 3 and 7, that being justified by his grace, we shall be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs, we should inherit according to the hope of eternal life. Okay. I mean, the book of Titus, uh, uh, if you're not familiar with it, I suggest you read it. The whole chapters of the book of Titus, very, I mean, powerful precepts, as you see. As you see, that's why I picked them out to, 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 to into this topic. Very p powerful um, um, precepts. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'll tell you, Titus is very powerful um, Chapter. It's not the law. Uh, uh, Titus has three chapters. It's very quick. I suggest you open up your Bible, dust them off, and read the book of Titus. I know many of you probably don't, have never heard the book of Titus in the Bible, but it is what it is. Uh, let's go to First John. The book of First John, one and verse two. 1 John 1 and verse 2 reads, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. It was promised and was given to us before this world what began. <laughs> precept upon precept. 1 John 1 and verse 2. 
For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. First John uh, 1 and 3, that which we have seen and heard declared we unto you, that ye shall also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and his son, Yahweh Shai Hamasiah. I mean, point blank and period. Fellowship is with the Most High. The only one that can give you everlasting life is the Most High and, and the Messiah. Um, stepping away from this world. Let's get a precept. First John 2, starting with the 24th verse. First John chapter 2, starting with the 24th verse. Salakian. Hold on. This is a very powerful chapter too. I know this. Yeah. First John 2. I'm going to start at the 15th verse. Because I keep saying, step away from this world. So, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't follow the tradition of men. Don't follow the commandment of men. First John 2. And I'm going to start at the 15th verse. First John 2 and 15 reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Read it again. Very powerful. First John, another of uh, the chapters that are not long, but very powerful. First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. First John 2 and 16. And this cuts all this cuts all of that the Messiah came for everybody. This cuts all that all the Gentiles or all the other nations. How can that be? There's no confusion with the most high. He says here, love not the world. How can he be talking about all the world? I explained to you in verse one. The world that the John 3:16 is talking about, you get your answer in, in um, Isaiah 45 and verse 17. The world is, is Israel, world without end. But I'm going to move on. Backtrack the first part of the lesson if, if you need understanding. 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that, uh, 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 1 John 2 and 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I mean, you can't make this up. I tell you, I'm already on part two and almost going on an hour. It looks like I would need three hours to cover all these precepts. But let me move on. I want to... Uh, let me move on. I'm just going to bring out a couple more precepts and wind down. Let's go uh, 1 John 5. 1 John 5 and verse 20. But there's so many precepts here. Let me just... So many precepts out here. First and 20 in the Holy Bible. Let me get to the point though because I know I didn't want to make these. This is almost going an hour long. Uh, 1 John 5 and 20 and reads, And we know that the Son of the Most High is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Yahweh Shai HaMasiyah. This is the true power and eternal life. Read it again. 1 John 5 and 20. Uh, and we know that the Son of the Most High is come and has given us the understanding. He, the, the, the Messiah sent out the Holy Spirit. He told the apostles that he had to leave, but I'm going to send you the comforter. He's going to teach you uh, uh, everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's going to send the Holy Spirit. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. And know that the Son of the Most High is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahweh Shai Hamasiyah. 
This is the true power and eternal life. <laughs> Can't make this up. One more precept and I'm going to wind this down. It's a lock for it being a long lesson, but once I get into it, through the Spirit carries me to different precepts. All power and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. Last precept I'm going to bring, I'm going to go in the book of Jude. Jude uh, is only one chapter in Jude. I'm going to drop down to the 21st verse. Jude 1 and 21 reads, Keep yourself in the love of the Most High. Looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMasiach, unto eternal life. We'll read it again, Jude 1 and 21. Keep yourself in the love of the Most High, looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMasiach, unto eternal life. Yasha Allah, I hope this was edifying. I know it was long lessons. But as you see, there's many precepts, powerful precepts, um, time consuming to search them. But like it's the scriptures commands to um, search the scriptures and read um, very powerful precepts. Again, in the book of Titus, Jude, they're all powerful precepts. But to the point, Jude right there, keep the love of the most high. So like, yeah, let me get right to it before I close this out. Um. Keep yourselves in the love of the Most High, looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Masiyak, unto eternal life. I hope it was edifying Israel. Any questions, send it in the comments. Stay Most High blessed. Endure to the end. The kingdom is nigh. As you see, the um, prophecies are just going crazy throughout this whole world. So much to cover is going down in this world. Um, peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.